Yeah, I'm so fond of the whole Indian American story in this country. I'm fond of my family story. And that story really started when dad got an arranged marriage with mom in India. My name is Ravi Patel. I'm an actor and filmmaker, probably most well known for making a documentary about my family called Meet the Patels. My dad, it really was that situation where he came with like $8 in his pocket. He placed in the top 1% of his high school and he was admitted to a college in America. Mom showed up here with a picture of my dad because she was afraid she wouldn't remember his face. Question, when you landed in, it was your 19th birthday? Yes. What was the date? How many people, where are you? Are you at like a party? No, I'm playing cards with her. Talk about success. Okay, so tell me, so you, what was the day you landed? The day I landed was, I think, June 1st, 1973. Okay, love you. You want to talk to Dad? He's probably in the middle of his game, right? Can he call you later, Bida? Yeah, you can call me later. We can pick this up. Okay, bye. Okay, Jason, I love you. Bye. Her 19th birthday was the day after she landed in this country. What are the stories that my mom and dad told me in the first few weeks of mom living in this apartment in Chicago with this stranger that was now gonna be her life partner? He would go off to work. And during that time, mom would try to find things to do. She'd obviously do a lot of cooking, which she still does. She always loves telling me how there was like all these giant Folgers tins, and that's where she kept all the Indian food and spices. And she had her like Indian outfit on, and she had her towel on her head, which is how she dried her hair. And part of her daily routine was she had to go check the mail. So she goes to check the mail, and the door closes behind her. It was one of those doors that locks once it closes. So mom realizes it's locked. Mom doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know anyone. She's freaking out. Terrified, she's just kind of like looking around. She sees a phone. It's like a red phone. So she goes, she picks up the phone. She's crying, she's looking at the phone. Someone's on the phone. Is the person saying hello? She's like, hello. And the person's saying hello. And she's like, hello. Anyway, that conversation didn't work out. She just hangs up and moves on. She just goes knocking on all the neighbor's doors. And she knocks on one of the neighbor's doors. Her name is Linda, they remember that. And mom, is she doesn't speak English. So that she goes, me, ki, me, a ki. And uh, Linda is okay. Like what, 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 Linda doesn't know what to do. Linda, Linda doesn't, like, I don't have a key. I'm not, you know, I'm not the soup. Isn't that what they called them back then, the soup? So mom is crying. Linda's confused. Do you want to come in and use my phone? And she goes, ah, oh, yeah. God, I imagine that must have been weird for her walking into an American's place. On American homes generally back then, I felt like every American's home smelled like beef. Anyway, mom goes into Linda's house. She uses the phone. She calls the custodian. What, did I, what is it called? The landlord. The soup. <laughs> the soup. And that guy shows up. You know, he's got all the keys. You've seen him. So they, he comes with the unlock, lets her in, and that's that. Well, in our in our culture, whenever you have a guest, it's customary to walk them out and just, you know, you're just waving and you're saying bye. And so mom walks him out, she's waving bye. All of a sudden you hear a little click. That's her door. She's now locked herself out once again. She calls after the guy. Oh, I, mm, oh, ah, ah, just uh, noises like this, I assume. But apparently he's upset at this time. Mom loves talking about how he called her little lady, which seems really mean. He goes, little lady, you here, door here. You here, door here. No, here. Mom understands this. This is pretty standard and uh, he leaves. Mom goes on with her day. A few minutes later, dad comes home from work. And, you know, good, glad you're in. You know, let's make sure we remember to use the key from now on, take that with you when you leave. At this point, a bunch of commotion is happening outside. Mom's like, what's that? What is all that noise outside? There's so much happening out there. There's ambulances, policemen. And my dad goes, oh, like someone used the emergency phone. There's like a red phone out there that you call if there's any sort of, you know, crisis. So they're trying to figure out what's going on. And mom goes, oh. <laughs> I mean, look, I love 
my family. What I've noticed about telling stories about my family is that it brings me closer to my family. I ask my parents questions that I never even thought to ask. The older they get, the more human they become. They're not just our parents, they become our friends. It's this beautiful symbiotic relationship that brings up new opportunities to learn about their experience. So much because I also want to hopefully do it as well as they did. I'm pretty good about my keys, but you know, I guess you know how they say you you want to, like every guy wants to marry their mother. Well, um, my wife is losing her keys almost every day, and I look for them. So, in a small way, uh, we're still carrying on that tradition. <laughs>